inside but you can look here and you can see that this is actually um, a damper so that this 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 uh, piece of metal has got no glass on the inside and if you put your hand there you'll feel you actually can feel the air going over you so therefore that's that's actually acting as a that's acting as a ventilator uh, to help the air from the outside go into the inside. Yeah, this is this is your clever passive ventilation. Passive ventilation. Which we'll see when we go inside. Takes the air all the and, and much to because uh, I'm quite I quite like all the sort of M and E stuff, and I'm a big believer in mechanical ventilation, heat recovery units. You've done it all passively. You're not into Everything, that at yeah, all. Absolutely. And like and slightly annoyingly to me, the people that as you were here said it worked really well. Yes. In terms of your um, heating and mechanical and ventilating, the, the, uh, these are um, trench heating, yeah, very kind of very shallow trench heating, which is a which is a water system based on a, on a boiler, and they operate from a from a thermostat, and they they work very efficiently in the sense that they come on and go off very quickly. So because the, the house is is so well thermally insulated. Actually, the, the time that these are needed to come on is very small. So it's in, in about 10 or 15 minutes, the whole house gets up to temperature. That's very good. Because actually one of the problems with unfloor heating is it can take a, a, a long time. Because unfloor heating typically sits under um, under a, a screed, which is some, some concrete, and then underneath the floor, which might be wood. And all of that actually needs to heat up before the heat can kind of get to the rest of it. Well, this, is, this is virtually instantaneous. Yeah. And it also then saves any potential danger of, I like to use solid materials, solid concrete, textured materials. So this is another solid material on the floor, which is walnut. So there's solid planks of walnut and those actually then don't, aren't going to be damaged by any underfloor heating. Well what's interesting about this is that this is where the this is the end of the boat if you like but this is the end of the boat which is where the glass so when we were looking inside you were seeing the view and so we've actually got a completely glazed facade two glazed facades and we've done direct glazing into a into a timber with um, covering the glazing beads with copper, which will ultimately go green, including a proper downpipe. And what's interesting is you can see, looking back at, at, the, at the glass, that it's slightly reflective, and that's because it's a coated glass, which means that it actually modifies the amount of heat. It's called a four seasons glass, and it works very effectively because this is a west facade, but it actually cuts down the um, uh, it gives you maximum heat from the sun in winter and excludes the heat from the sun in the summer. No, I have to say, I was a bit sceptical when you told me, but it's incredible. I've been in here in the heat of summer yeah. and it really has made a massive difference. Well, normally when you go through it, it, it normally it's hotter inside a glass. Yeah. Than in this case, it's cooler. And that then also helps because that cuts down the, the, the spiking of that and therefore it, ma it makes it, it's all part of that kind of passive cooling effect. And as does the concrete, because the concrete itself actually acts as a thermal uh, flywheel and therefore it actually keeps, that, it keeps the heating stable. So the whole thing is actually designed to have a stability and it's an exercise. Yeah. It's been a, part of the thing is as, as, a, as a research exercise in how to do that with a combination of timber and highly insulated, i.e. timber frame, but also using the thermal effect of concrete. So you're combining the two materials. <laughs>